Hey guys, welcome back to Coding Flamingo. So in the last video we looked at adding AAD authentication into our application. But this client uh, will only send the tokens to our uh, backend server. So like let's say you're using AAD authentication and you want to use the same token to get something from graph. So for example if you're doing some application that you're going to put usernames and you want to kind of like autocomplete or check if the user exists or something, you can do that client side instead of having to go to a server and the server check with graph, you can use the user token and uh, request on behalf of the user to graph. So in this video we're just going to look at that. Um, I went ahead and did some of the uh, coding, tedious coding ahead of time. Uh, so let's just go through what I did. So I created an AD object model which is just going to have the object ID, the friendly name, and whether or not it's valid, and the object type. Then I also created a group graph model. So this is what we're going to be getting from graph. Uh, so we are able to deserialize and everything. So I did that the same for group and users. Other than that, I went ahead and created the... So you have to create a custom uh, authorization message handler. And I created the one for graph. So basically, this is a URLs where the token will be attached to. Uh, we're just sending it to graph, so we're only adding graph. But if you had multiple URLs that you're sending this token to, you can add it. And then the scopes you're going to request the token to have. So in this case, we want to be able to read all applications, all groups, and all users. Which brings me to, we have to add that to the application in the portal. So let's go here to portal. We're going to go to our application. And in the client application, so this is the one that is running on the uh, user's computer, we're going to add uh, the API permission. So we're going to go to Microsoft Graph and we're going to add this permission. So we're just going to go back here. Same for user. So as you can see, it's delegated permissions. So it'll use it with the user token. It's not the own application token. So we're going to uh, update it. And now we have to go back as the tenant admin and approve, because this has to be approved by a tenant admin. So we're going to go here, we're going to grant permission to that application. So now the application has access to request those tokens on behalf of the user. So that takes care of the custom authorization message that we're going to use. Now we're going to have to go back to program. And in here right now we're creating a generic HTTP client. Here we're going to have to create two, one for the back end and one for the, for the front end. Uh, sorry, one for the back end and one for graph. So we're just going to go ahead and create them. So as you can see, I also added it in the services. I created a HTTP client back end. Uh, this one, I kind of did a hacky thing. We have created multiple HTTP clients uh, in the past using poly and everything. This one was kind of like a lazy way of doing it. I just copied our regular poly policy for like retries. And then I'm just returning a, the weather forecast. Usually you would just make it more generic and then you would deserialize it when you call the function. But in this case, we're just using it. The, the whole point is to just see the token issuance. So I just was lazy and did the weather forecast one. And as you can see, I'm not dealing with errors or anything. And then for graph, uh, I kind of did the same. I created the same with poly and everything. And in here I created a function called validate AAD user and group objects. So it's just going to check users and groups. We're not going to check for service principles. And basically what it does is it first checks if a group with that name exists and a user with that name exists. And if it doesn't find any of them, so basically if count is zero for the list before, it'll go and uh, look for 
uh, containing strings. So like if like basically a substring or something, so this might be used for autocomplete or something like this, and it'll return the list of objects. Uh, once again, this would be good, and then like the user could select which one is the one they meant or something, create a modal and all that stuff. In this case, we're just gonna return the list and just do first or default uh, as homework. I mean, if you're gonna use this, you, you'll have to change that to actually do the pop-up and everything, but as I said, uh, we're taking shortcuts just to be able to do the token thing and this not end up being a two-hour video. So in here you can see the uh, validate user and like how we're calling the graph APIs and everything. As always, remember that the code is on GitHub, so I might skim through some stuff in the video, but you can always look in the description for the GitHub link and look to the at the code with more detail or like copy anything you want to copy or anything. So going back to program, not, now we're creating these two clients. So let, let, let's just get rid of the, the I'm just going to comment this out. This is the one that was before. And now we're creating an HTTP client that will inject our backend service that we created. And it's just going to use the base uh, address uh, authorization handler, which is the one that comes default and will attach the token to your backend and to the base address and all that stuff. And then we created another one called Graph API, which will use the uh, custom authorization that we created here as the authentication for it. And it's going to be used for the graph.microsoft.com. So anytime you send anything to the graph.microsoft.com. Um, so in here, we, are, we already added the service a server API one. So we have to do the same for the Graph API one. So that takes care of the startup. So now when we go to fetch data, we have to change this to be to the backend service. And just to keep it consistent, we're going to change the name of it. And here, we have to change this as well. Good. And now we're adding the navigation manager manager because if we go here, we actually pass. We have to pass the full URL instead of just passing the the ending part of it. So let's go back to fetch, and we're gonna do manager, and in here we're gonna do plus so here we're passing the base URI plus weather forecast and we're doing a get call so this should return the forecasts so this should call the back end and do kind of like the same as we were doing now let's add we're just gonna as once again we're just trying to get the token thing working so we're just gonna do a quick HTML that what it's gonna do is, it's just gonna create, uh, it'll have like a field to add the the user or group, and and then it'll display them in a table if it exists, and you'll be able to delete it and stuff. So here we're just gonna add the code as well. And if we can see the code, we're just calling the HTTP graph service, validate AAD user group. If it exists, we're going to add it. And if it doesn't, and then for deleting, we're just going to delete. In other videos, we have covered toasting and everything. In here, you would want to tell the user what happened. If they press the button, nothing happens. So uh, as homework, you can add the toasting. Um, all right, so let's try it out. So now we're going to log in. And as you can see, the backend still works even though we're calling with our new our new client. And now let's try the the graph. So we have some breakpoints so we can see that the user result returned the the right user, so object ID and everything. 
So we're going to go through and it's going to add it. And then it's going to try to add the groups. And there is no group with that name, so this should be count of one. So as you can see, size of one. So let's just continue. And now it added to requester groups. So if we go back here, now we can see it here. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.